In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Minus Forum MS S1 Max. This is a mini PC slash mini workstation that I've really been wanting to get my hands on, and it's powered by the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. But other than that, this does have some new features built in that we haven't seen in any other mini PC on the market like USB 4 V2, so up to 80 gigs instead of 40, a PCIe slot with the ability to add a single slot card, we could do a GPU here, and dual 10 gigabit ethernet. This is all coming in a package around two liters small, so it's a pretty tiny little workstation here, and I gotta say, it is a really good looking little mini PC. We've got a full metal outer chassis, up front here, Minisforum did a bang up job with this lug. Those USB 4 V2s are up front, Round back, we've got a ton of I.O., and it's got its own built-in 320-watt power supply, so we don't have to worry about a brick hanging off the desk. And again, the front of this thing does look really nice sitting on the desk. You can set it up vertically or horizontally. It's got that honeycomb going on. Some ventilation over here for the massive cooler that Minisforum has designed specifically for this setup. And when it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got a 3.5mm audio jack two USB 4 V2 ports, and again, these will do up to 80 gigs instead of 40 gigs. I'm really interested in testing this out with like a Thunderbolt 5 eGPU down the road. I've also got one full-size USB 3.2 port, plus it's got a microphone array built in. Taking a look at the rear I.O., we've got one full-size HDMI 2.1 FLR port, so it'll do 8K60 or 4K 120, two full-size USB 2.0 ports, Two more, two more USB 4 ports, but these are 40 gig ports around back here. Still pretty fast for what we've got here. Two more full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, dual 10 gigabit ethernet, and like I mentioned, it's got its own power supply built in. So we've got our power input right back here. The way Minisform has set this up is pretty neat. We've got two screws back here and we can slide the whole unit right out. So up front here, we've got our cooling system, dual blower style fans with a pretty massive heat sink as you can see. And we've actually got four different power profiles that we can use here. So performance, balanced, quiet, and even rack mode. The TDP on this will do up to 160 watts. And around back here, we've got that PCIe X16 slot. It's actually an X4 slot, but uh, you know, a low profile single slot card like an RTX 3060 would work out really well in this unit or you could add more M.2 storage over that slot, but we've already got two M.2 slots here. So each of these will house a four terabyte drive. We can do a total of eight terabytes of storage in this unit. I will do a video with a dedicated GPU, but in this first look video, I just kind of wanted to get a feel for the performance overall, like it sits. And when it comes down to it, I mean, we've got a pretty powerful iGPU here with 40 compute units. Speaking of that, when it comes to the overall specs, we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. So 16 cores, 32 threads, all based on Zen 5. Base clock, 3 gigahertz with a boost up to 5.1. The Radeon 8060S iGPU based on RDNA 3.5. 40 compute units up to 2900 megahertz. The most powerful iGPU on the market right now. They're only offering this in one RAM variant at the time of making this video. So we've got 128 gigabytes of unified RAM running at a 256-bit bus at 8,000 megatransfers per second. And with this, we can dedicate up to 96 gigs to VRAM if you feel the need for AI applications. Two M.2 2280 slots, four terabytes each, up to eight terabytes in total. Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and out of the box, this is running Windows 11. Before we get into testing, I wanted to give you a look at the BIOS because there's at least one setting you may want to change to get the best performance, and this is using Minisforum's Visual BIOS. So from Setup, we're going to go to Advanced, and right here at the top, Power Limit Settings. So we've got a Quiet, Balanced, Performance, and Rack. I want to be in Performance Mode, but to give you an idea of the different power profiles that we have here, Performance Mode has a boost up to 160 watts, Sustain, 130, and the fan speed is going to be up to 95%, so this thing will get a bit louder. Balanced mode, 130 boost, 95 sustain, fan speed up to 76%. Quiet mode, 110 boost, 60 watt sustain, up to 76% on that fan speed. And rack mode, which is going to give us a boost up to 140, it's got a sustain 100 watt TDP, but the fan will do up to 100%, because when we're racking something like this, we really don't have to worry about fan noise. But uh, we've got some other settings here. So from CVS, 
we can go to our MBIO options, GFX configuration, and I noticed that our UMA frame buffer size or our VRAM size was only set to two gigs. And we can change this directly from within Windows using AMD software, or you can do it from here. And we can do all the way up to 96 gigs. We've actually got some good choices here. So four, eight, 16, 32, 64, or 96. I'm sitting at 64, just kind of splitting it in half. So we've got 64 for the iGPU, 64 for system RAM. Uh, more settings here. If you really wanted to get down to it, we do have SMU common options, SPL control, sustained power limit. And I'm not exactly sure if this is really controllable here because we do have those presets. I'll test it in my next video, but we're going to be in performance mode with this setup. I'm going to save, exit, and we'll get right into some benchmarks. Keep in mind, we are in performance mode for all of these benchmarks, and the first one we have is Geekbench 6, looking solid here with a single core of 2,947, multi 23,151. I mean, we've got 16 cores, 32 threads here, boosting up really nice at this uh, sustained 140 watt in performance mode. Next, Cinebench R24, single core coming in at 105, and you can see that the Apple M1 Max is ahead at 113, along with the M1 Ultra. But when it comes to multi-core, I ran this twice. 1,923 was my best score in performance mode, beating out everything else on the list. I also wanted to run at least one benchmark on this iGPU, so I went with 3D Mark Time Spy. This has definitely fallen right in line with other Max Plus 395 powered systems. We're up to 11,395 uh, total score, 11,434 on the graphic score. I know for a fact that I can get better scores uh, on the CPU and GPU with this setup, a little bit of tuning, but in this video, I just wanted to take a look at that stock performance profile, and it's not bad at all. I mean, this is a really powerful little system. Now it's time to jump into some gaming here. First up, I've got Doom the Dark Ages. We're at medium with FSR set to quality, 1440p. Up in the top left hand corner, I've got Afterburner running, and you can see we're right there at that 140 watt TDP. So that's across the board here. It's sustained, it's doing a great job like this, and CPU temps are really low for what we're doing here. The fan is kicking up a bit because in performance mode, it can reach up to 95, but I think we're around 80% right now. Not horrible, but it is audible. I also wanted to test out Marvel Rivals 1440p FSR set to balance and we're at high settings. So we're seeing an average in the high 70s with it even during battle. Really good performance and you know I don't mind playing this game at 1080. Dropping it down is going to bring us up to 120 on average. Checking out Borderlands 4, and uh, this hasn't fared very well on any iGPU just yet, and hopefully we do get some more optimizations for the game because it's kind of all over the place. I'm not using frame gen, and with frame gen, we can get over 100 FPS on average, so it does have FSR frame gen built in. We're at medium settings, FSR set to balance, and you can see in some cases it will dip under that 60 mark, but on average, we're around 63 FPS. And finally, God of War Ragnarok. This is just a very well optimized game. 1440p high with FSR set to quality, seeing an average in the high 70s with it. And I do think it looks just fine like this, but if you wanted to go up to ultra with no scaling, so with FSR off, you will have to use some FSR frame gen. The last thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU temps and total system power consumption. Remember, through all of my testing, I just went to performance mode. That's what I wanted to run it at. Does boost up to 160 watts. We've got a sustain of 140. Average 1440p gaming, APU temps were only 63 degrees Celsius, and the max recorded while running Cinebench R24 was 83. And while doing other tasks, just everyday computing, I mean, you're not going to hit thermal throttle. Even with Cinebench running uh, for 10 minutes straight, stressing out all 16 cores and 32 threads, we only hit 83. So that's great, but the fan can get quite loud, especially running something like that. In performance mode, it will do close to 95% duty cycle. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. If you take it down to balance, it's gonna be a lot more quieter and you're still gonna see good performance out of this machine. I also tested total system power consumption from the wall using a kilowatt meter. And at idle, this only pulls 16 watts in performance mode. It's probably a lot less in balanced mode. 
1440p gaming, it jumps up to 187 watts total draw, and the maximum I could get this to pull while maxing out all 16 cores, 32 threads, and the iGPU was 236 watts. And remember, we've got a 320 watt power supply, so we're good on that end, but it's not a super low power consumption mini PC. Now, when you compare it to a large full form factor PC, yeah, it's pulling a lot less than something like that would with a big dedicated GPU. So first impressions, personally, I love the overall design. I think it looks really good, whether you want to set it vertically or horizontally on the desk. Having that built-in power supply is a plus. That way we don't have to worry about that uh, power brick behind the desk. And given that we've got that X16 slot, we can add a low profile card in here, be it more storage or a GPU. That's something I will be testing in my next video. So definitely keep an eye out. But yeah, this thing performs really well. Kind of wish it was a bit quieter in performance mode, but I mean, it is pushing a lot of wattage in a very small form factor, so I kind of understand what's going on here. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video at the Menace Forum MS S1 Max. If you're interested in learning a little more about this device, I will leave links in the description, and if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. I've already got a couple videos planned. I definitely want to test out that USB 4 V2 with a Thunderbolt 5 E GPU. So if that's something you want to see, make sure you hit that like button and think about subscribing. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.